Now 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, a man is dead after an officer-involved shooting in Harlan County. What we know about that shooting just ahead this morning. Crews worked for hours overnight putting out a fire at a Lexington home near UK's campus. We'll have more on the damage. And thousands of UK students will be moving back to campus tomorrow. We'll have more on the traffic impact that we'll have, all the life you'll see over there, coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm Bill Bryant. It's Friday, and we're glad you're with us. That steamy situation is going to continue out there. It is tomorrow. We'll really be watching for the storms to ramp up here and there. Yeah, Michael, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, and it looks like the deeper you go into the weekend, better likelihood of seeing those storms in the forecast. Today, it's a smaller opportunity if you're sitting in eastern Kentucky looking due east. You're actually seeing those storms in West Virginia. It's not in, in Kentucky, and they're moving away from us, so there's good news for us. 78 degrees right Right now in Lexington and Frankfurt. Almost 80 degrees early this morning. We'll finish off upper 80s to around 90 degrees with that small chance of rain in the forecast, just like the past few days. But we're going to time out the weekend rain because a lot of us still have plans going on, maybe hitting up the Lake River, whatever it may be. After a long school week, I'll have that in your forecast and I'll show you when you should arrive and when you should leave. Coming up in a few minutes. Okay, we thank you. This morning, investigators are trying to figure out what led to a deadly officer involved shooting in Harlan County. Police say one man was killed about 7 o'clock last night in the Woodland Hill subdivision near Harlan. State police say officers from the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Lexington, Police and the Lexington Fire Department arson unit were involved in an altercation with the man from Harlan County. Police say that man was killed. They did not say who shot him. They have not released the name of the man right now, so a lot of questions still to go on that story. New this morning, crews worked for hours overnight to put out a fire in a Lexington house near UK's campus. The fire started around midnight at a house on South Limestone and Maxwellton Court. Crews say the fire started in the basement and it spread throughout the house. They say the fire had already advanced by the time they got there. They had to work extra hard to put it out because the home is older. No one was injured. The house was vacant at the time. Firefighters say the house does have significant damage. The fire burned through the floor. They had to knock down some walls to put it out. They say they're still investigating what caused that fire. Also new this morning, police are looking into an overnight break-in at two different Lexington vapor shops. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain now is at our alert desk with more on that. Michelle? Yeah, and Bill, police say they're still trying to determine what exactly was taken from these shops. Police tell us the first break-in happened about midnight at the Avail Vapor Shop on Nichols Park Drive. Police say the front window was smashed in that break-in. In the second break-in, it happened about 30 minutes later at Precision Vapor on Southland Drive. Police say the front windows there were also smashed. They say they're not sure if the two were related. Police are looking to see if there's any surveillance video in these two break-ins. Back to you guys. Thanks, Michelle. What started as a rescue of a boater on the Kentucky River ended in an arrest. It happened yesterday afternoon near Lock 5 Road in Anderson County, not far from Lawrenceburg. Rescue crews say the boater, Ronald Callahan, had to be rescued after getting stuck on a lock. They say Callahan claims his boat ran out of gas, causing it to stall. He was very frantic. He was scared. He was, he was telling us, thank you, thank you so much for saving his life. But after making it out of the water, Callahan was arrested. He's charged with operating a vessel under the influence of alcohol, a second offense. Prosecutors may have a major problem in their case against a man accused of killing a retired school bus driver. Police have charged Nicholas Willinger with murder, robbery, and burglary after the 2010 death of Sue Jones at her Scott County home. According to documents Willinger's attorneys filed, some of the evidence is now missing. They claim the detective investigating the case put two large notebooks of files on his bookshelf when he retired. Those notebooks are now gone, and no one knows what happened to them. Willinger's attorneys want the charges against him dismissed because of the missing evidence. A grand jury has indicted a Breathitt County woman accused of killing her husband. Sandra Hurd is facing murder and assault charges. Police say she shot and killed her husband, Henry, in June. They say she also shot her son and a woman who was with him at the time. They both survived. When police found her, they say she was lying in bed next to her husband's body. 
A candlelit vigil to honor a Lexington murder victim was held yesterday. Friends and family gathered to remember 46 year old Stephanie Mullins. Police say they found Mullins dead early Sunday morning behind an apartment building on Cross Keys Road. Her brother said he hoped the vigil would shed light on the kind of person Mullins was. Stephanie, she was, she was a great individual. She, she loved her kids. She, was, she loved her grandchildren. She was fam very family oriented. She, she really was. And she was a very good friend to all, to all of her friends. Lexington police have not made any arrests in the case. They say they're still trying to figure out what led to the murder. Mullen's family says they also want the vigil to honor all 13 people. Police say they've been murdered in Lexington this year. And national news, there are just about 90 days to go before the election. Time is ticking, and presidential nominees Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are spending more time in battleground states. Trump has been focused on Florida the last few days, where he has criticized Hillary Clinton's economic plan and the Obama administration's policies on terrorists. Clinton touted her economic plan while in Michigan. She is calling for billions in new investments in manufacturing and infrastructure jobs. She has also promised to release her 2015 taxes soon. Trump says he won't release his until an IRS audit is completed. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky says he is not sure that Republicans can keep control of the Senate after the November elections. In an interview, the Republican says the party's chances of that happening are, quote, very dicey. He says the GOP is in a dogfight to hold off Democrats in the Senate. He adds that Republicans are defending 24 Senate seats compared to just 10 by Democrats. McConnell was asked in our interview if he would call Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump a bully. I think the American people expect a certain level of seriousness um, about uh, the most important job in the country. Senator McConnell has endorsed Trump, but he also says he worries that Trump could impact races further down the Republican ticket. Tonight, WKYT will be doing live weather from the Lexington Green. Starting at 6, there will be live music, part of Lakeside Live. Tonight, Katie Mullen and Vince Thompson will perform, as well as Shane and Catherine Mullen. Tomorrow, it will be Ray's Music Exchange. Thousands of University of Kentucky students will begin moving back into the dorms tomorrow. Exciting time, and combined with the construction that's going on, the move ins are expected to significantly impact traffic around campus. Good thing it's on a Saturday. That'll lessen it some. WKYT's Mike Byer live at the University of Kentucky with more on what to expect as far as closures, delays, and so forth. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Tomorrow is move in day for nearly half the student population at UK. Many of them will be moving into the brand new Holmes Hall here at at South Limestone and Avenue of Champions. Now, for those participating in moving day tomorrow, here's what you need to know. There will be many no parking zones across campus that will go in effect from midnight until 6 Saturday evening. Both sides of University Drive from Cooper Drive to Hilltop Avenue will be a no parking zone. There will be no parking on Sports Center Drive between Woodland Avenue and the employee E lot north of the Nutter football training facility. There will be metered parking in front of Roselle Hall on Avenue of Champions. There will be no parking on Martin. Luther King Boulevard between Maxwell Street and Avenue of Champions. Same goes on Lexington Avenue between the employee E lot entrance and Avenue of Champions. And lastly, on Woodland Avenue between Hilltop Avenue and Sports Center Drive, there will be no parking allowed. Now, UK police will be out in full force helping with the first move in day of the new school year. Coming up at 5 30, we'll take a look at which streets will be closed tomorrow. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, we appreciate it very much. Another traffic alert for drivers in Lexington. You can expect some delays starting this Sunday on Nicholasville Road. Crews will be rewiring traffic signals at the Manowar Boulevard intersection. Work will start at 7 a.m., should be completed by 3. That's the goal. Traffic lights will be off while crews work on them. Lexington police will be directing traffic during the outage. This work is supposed to help ease traffic congestion around the new Summit development going up there. So uh, we'll see how that all works yeah. out. WKYT this morning, Josh, getting started. So good to have you with us here on this Friday. They traded in the glitz and glamour for a ping pong paddle. So we'll tell you why a group of celebrities played in the annual Kershaw Challenge when we come back on WKYT. I do have a little bit of a change in the forecast, the seven day, and it will work out for some of us. It'll help some of us for your weekend. I'll explain that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's not feeling too good all this morning. 78 degrees out right now in Fayette County. So, as you're walking out the door, 
trust me, it's going to be like the past couple of mornings where it's just downright humid. That's the way it's going to be. Roughly 80 degrees there in Louisville, Frankfort, Shelbyville, Simpsonville, Lawrenceburg, my friends there in Anderson County, holding on to roughly 78 degrees in the forecast early this morning. It's incredible to see that. Defender Radar Network, still that system is still well back toward the west. We are getting a couple of showers, a couple of sprinkles back toward Lawrence County and Martin County, but that is it. And during the morning hours, small chance, just like the past couple of days. I just don't see much in the morning. Afternoon, still another small chance. I looked on radar yesterday. Most of us were dry once again, but still there were a few storms out there that put down really good rain in some spots, and that's just the way it's going to be today. And then tomorrow, I would say a few storms tomorrow. Still no washout tomorrow. I would say tomorrow is actually a pretty decent day for most part. So let me take you now through Saturday for this first part. Where I've paused it right here is now through Saturday. Obviously, these are not big numbers. These are not numbers that you say, okay, I got to cancel some plans. I got to work around this. It's nothing like that. Now, let's go Sunday into Tuesday. Now, all together, now you're starting to talk about that heavy rain threat moving on in. The good news for you guys is, is that I've dropped the chances of rain from 60% to 40% for your Saturday, but still kept them there on Sunday, Monday, and now Tuesday, I've bumped it up. Because that system's sliding back. It's just not progressing fast that these models have indicated the past few days. So it's just stalling out. It's not moving that fast. That means that we'll put it deeper into the forecast, but you can still see central, north, and western zones have the best chance of rain. Uh, and really the best chance of flash flooding off into Sunday into Tuesday. All right, I'm still showing the first day of school pictures. This is Michaela's first day of fifth grade. That's from Amanda Warren. Cute little girl heading off to fifth grade, man. Next is middle school. Unbelievable, right? All right, here are the two. Uh, we got some twins ready for fifth grade, too, and that's from, from Jennifer Page. Really cute pictures, and I've got several more to show you once again for today. Your seven day forecast. I told you there's some good news in the forecast. Good news is, if you have plans on Saturday, then stick to your plans. It was one of those times, the past three or four days that we've had interviewees come in, talk about their events this coming weekend, they were saying, is there any way we can hold off the rain chance on Saturday? And during that time, it didn't look like it, but now this thing's slowing down. There's some good news for you that it's backing up. It's pushing more of Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday as opposed to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mm. So Saturday's looking mostly dry, but you can't rule out a few storms during that day. Okay. Some if good news. Yeah. yeah. Getting rid of it all together is out of the question. Out of the question. <laughs> Not going to happen. I tell you, it's been some pattern here it for really about has. a month. Absolutely. Micah, thank you. <laughs> 515, when celebrities get together, it's usually a glamorous affair, but instead of getting all glammed up, some celebs in Los Angeles put on their game faces for some Serious competition. Ping pong took over Dodger Stadium for charity. It's Clayton Kershaw's fourth annual ping pong for purpose tournament. Kershaw is the pitcher for the LA Dodgers. He traded in his glove for a paddle to help kids in need. Comedians Will Farrell also joined in the comp competition. He played and hosted the sold out tournament. Cool. All right. Looks like they had some fun there. Yeah. <laughs> it's your Friday on WKYT this morning. Glad to have you along. We have a lot more coming up in our top stories in just a few minutes. We've got to look at your money as well. New data on mortgage rates and a new flavor of Oreos you'll have to see to believe. I'm Brooke Silva Braga in New York. Those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Hey there, good morning. Rise and shine. Hey it there. is your Friday. We're it's gonna make Friday. it a good day and get it to that. It doesn't feel weekend. like Friday, but I'm glad it is. I, I, I agree with that, and I don't know why, but it's very strange. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But uh, you know, lots of folks back to school and so forth at this point. CVS is introducing its own payment system, and new data has come out on mortgage rates. Oreos are getting a new filling. Brooke Silver Braga has the latest on your money. Mortgage rates ticked up last week but remain historically low. The average 30 year fixed loan is 3.45%. That's up from 3.43 a week earlier. The 15 year fixed rose to 2.76%, up from 2.74. Both are well below their levels a year ago. The major stock indexes closed at new record highs yesterday. For the Dow, it was a 117 point jump. The Nasdaq gained 23. CVS is introducing its own payment system. Their smartphone app will now let shoppers scan their phone at the register, similar to Walmart's payment option. CVS Pay is live now in four Northeast states and should work nationwide by the end of the year. 
And some Oreos are getting a very special filling. Swedish fish Oreos are being sold exclusively at Kroger supermarkets. The cookies feature gummy candy flavored filling and that distinct bright red color. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silverbrack. Okay, there was a collective yuck on that last story about the Oreos. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, just because you can doesn't mean you should, okay? Well, exactly. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, the old standard has its way of winning out. How about out, the you know? Swedish fish on one side, the Oreos on the other? Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, Macy's has announced its plans to close about 100 of its department stores. The retailer said yesterday it will shut down about 15% of its struggling stores. The move comes as Macy's revealed its second quarter sales fell less than 50 Macy's did not say which stores or how many employees will be affected. Uh, it said this will happen early next year. Shoppers should watch for great closing sales, though, at the end of the year. That's the word on that. So we don't we'll know about the, uh, the Fayette Mall yeah. store, but we know that it is quite busy. Uh, wouldn't think it would make that list, but uh, we'll see. We were see. trying to reach out yesterday. I personally yeah. uh, sent an email off to somebody trying to find out which stores are closing, and they had not gotten back to me as of yeah. noon yesterday, but we'll see. Yeah, no list yet. All right. Our time this morning is 522, and coming up, we'll have all the latest news for you. Our top stories uh, at the bottom of the hour. Yeah, sports is up as well next. Football season just about three weeks away for the Wildcats, and a vocal leader is emerging from one of the quietest guys on the team, and LeBron James is set to sign a huge contract. I'll tell you the details next in sports. It is nearly 80 degrees early this morning in some spots, Lexington and Frankfurt. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris getting you updated on your morning. It's humid outside, but it is dry. There's some good news. So it's going to be mainly dry as really we go throughout much of your day. Only a small chance of rain later on this afternoon as most will be there with the heat. 95 to 99 degrees again for your heat index, the way it feels outside. But you still have a small chance out there that we could see a passing shower or thunderstorm. Rain chances increase for parts of your weekend, not all of your weekend. Show you that in your seven day first. Let's check out sports and see what's going on this morning. The life of an offensive lineman is glorious. You get glory, you get accolades that come with life in the trenches. Said no lineman ever. One of the best of the SEC is UK's John Toth, who's normally as quiet as a church mouse. However, Toth is coming out of his shell, and his coaches are certainly glad Toth is becoming more of a vocal leader. I've definitely uh, gotten a little more vocal the past couple days, just trying to help guys understand what they need to do and what they need to do better and stuff like that. More as an instructor than a motivator, you're saying? I would say guiding. Guiding. Guiding them. <laughs> trying to. Does that need a little stern tone once in a while? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's always urgency out on the field. Um, but when we're off the field, we're all we're all friends and, and brothers, and we love to hang out and stuff like that. Louisville football coach Bobby Petrino says his Twitter account was hacked after material including a link to an adult website and sexually suggestive hashtags were liked. By his profile, Petrino issued a statement yesterday saying uh, about that like and alerting everyone about it. Petrino said he generally supervises his Twitter account, but notes there are, quote, multiple people and possibly an unauthorized user with access to his account. Petrino added, we are taking measures to make sure this situation never happens again. LeBron James has agreed to a three-year, $100 million contract with the NBA champion Cleveland Cavaliers. That, according to his agent, Rich Paul. The salary in the first year of this deal will be $31 million, making James the highest paid player in the NBA for the first time in his career. The salary for the 2017-2018 season will top $33 million, making LeBron the highest paid player in a single season in league history. That's better than Michael Jordan, better than them all. This past year, LeBron leading the Cavs to its first ever NBA championship. That is a look at sports. Finally, it's Friday. Have a great day.